Also, when we look at Revelation chapter 22, in verses 8 and 9, it says the angel, who was apostle to signify to John, tells a little bit more about himself in Revelation chapter 22. I'm going to read verses 8 and 9. And I, John, the person hearing and observing these things, even when I heard and observed, I fell to worship in front of the feet of the angel. What angel? The angel pointing out these things to me. And that's the angel that the Lord Jesus Christ apostled to signify to John. And then in verse 9 it says, And he says to me, this is the angel replying to John after John fell down as though to worship him because of the tremendous revelation and signs he was seeing. The angel said, you must see not to do that. I am a slave together with you and your brothers, the prophets, and the people keeping the words of this book. You must worship God. So here we can see that the angel who was giving the signs to John was also a slave together. He was in the worker service category, a servant. He wasn't superior to John in the eyes of God or the Lord Jesus Christ. He was on a par, as it were, in relation to the work or service category. He too was serving God and the Lord Jesus Christ. So when God asked the Lord Jesus Christ to make this known to his slaves, it would have included holy people, Christians, those who have received the Spirit of Christ in us. It would have included those in a future time, once we have been gathered together, those Israeli Judeans, in background, who would also at that time believe regarding the Lord Jesus Christ. They would be slaves or servants, those who would decide to believe regarding the Lord Jesus Christ would serve him. And also then it includes those spirit being slaves or servants. That's how God makes things known during the present time and at the future time. Those who receive the gift of Holy Spirit like we do, Christians, holy people, we have that Spirit of Christ in us, that which God reveals to the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ can make known to the church, and that is what makes it known to the other people living in the world today and to the spirit beings that God has or to the devils in the world today. Once it is made known, it's made known. If it is not being revealed, it's a secret or a mystery. Now as we read on and continue in Revelation chapter 3, we must realize that several of the events prophesied in chapters 2 and 3 have already occurred. And the judgments prophesied to or for the angels and their churches by the Lord Jesus Christ have been implemented. However, the final judgment and implementation is still future to us today. We will read regarding that as we approach Revelation chapters 19 and 20. Now rereading Revelation chapter 1 verses 1 and 2, it says, Revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave to him to point out to his slaves, which things are necessary to come to pass in quickness. And he, the Lord Jesus Christ, signified it. How? Having apostled by means of his angel to his slave John. And then, of course, that word angel in Greek is the word angelos. It could also be translated as the word messenger. So I could have written this as, and he signified having apostled by means of his messenger to his slave John. However, in this context, I feel that the word angel is more appropriate because it is in fact referring to a spirit being angel and not a human messenger. And then this angel was the one who helped the Lord Jesus Christ to signify to John, and then it was John who witnessed the word of God and the witness of or from Jesus Christ as many things as he saw. 
Let's continue and look at another question that came up from our last sessions. I was asked, why are some words in your translation different to the words being used in the King James Version of the Bible? An example of this is in Revelation chapter 1 and verse 8. The King James Version says, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. However, in the True Bible Study translation of verse 8, I have, I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, the one being and the one who used to be and the one coming, the all strong one. Again, it's by looking at the Greek texts that we can learn a lot regarding what John wrote. In this verse, looking at the Greek text, we can see that the word for Lord and the word for God, Theos, is used in the Greek text. Therefore, in the True Bible study translation, I would definitely, and I have, included the word God along with Lord. And this makes it so clear to me and to those reading that it is God who is speaking. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God. And God is the one being. He is the one who used to be during a past time. He is the one coming during a future time. He is the all-strong one. 